Um, let's begin with citizen concerns. David, are there any citizen uh, concerns out there? No hands up, John. Okay, thank you. So um, we could go into- Oh, uh, uh, John, one, one hand just went up. Sure. Go ahead, please. Hi, it's Tara from West Acton. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Tara. Yes, uh, so I'm concerned about the Metro West um, compact, and I didn't see a copy of the letter in the agenda packet, and I'm hoping to see a copy of that letter. Um, I hope that the public sees that kind of thing before um, the uh, select and vote on it. Um, it's in the consent agenda, and it seems like that would be something that we'd want to see first before, um, so that we at least have a chance to comment on it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I emailed you and asked for a copy, and I didn't get a response. Uh, okay. No, one else, John. John will be addressing that in his um, manager's update, and uh, uh, if, if somebody and somebody may wish to um, take it off consent and have an open discussion. So that's your thank you, Tara. Um, so in uh, for the chair's update, um, I had uh, just by oversight, I, I had neglected to mention at, at our last meeting, I had um, asked. Peter Light um, at our AL at our October ALG meeting. Um, when would the uh, high school year be completed? And he said it was Wednesday, uh, June 16th. He didn't anticipate any snow days this year because of COVID. And if there were snow days, they would um, uh, uh, just do a, a virtual day. So um, that would um, leave for us. Um, one option of having town meeting on Saturday, um, June 19th, or a regular, you know, Monday meeting on on Monday, uh, June uh, 21st. So, you know, those are dates and a timeline um, we could think about. Um, we were um, also um, going to plan a little re, uh, an online reception for Steve Anderson, much like what was done for Roland Bartle when he retired. Um, Steve is retiring from the practice of law on December 31st, and um, we wanted to have him in and thank him for his many years of service to the town. Um, so working with Nina, um, my the intention would be to invite back um, select board members who um, served with, um, hey there, how you doing? <laughs> um, served with um, with Steve, that would be um, uh, Janet Adachi, who also was a college classmate of Steve, so they go way back. Um, and um, Mike Gowing and um, um, I think there, were, there were one or two others. So we'll bring them all on and we'll either do this on, on our first meeting in December the twenty the, the seventh or the uh, uh, twenty first. So um, that would be it from me, and let me ask John for his updates. Uh, thank you um, for the town manager's updates. I have a few things uh, coming to you live from uh, upstairs in the meeting room virtually. Uh, I wanted to announce that as of last week, we have a new deputy fire chief. Uh, we promoted Anita Arnum to be our deputy fire chief. She was uh, most recently a captain in the fire department and she's worked for the town for over 30 years. Uh, so we're really uh, excited to have her start. Uh, she started, I think on the eighth and she's doing a great job so far. She is of course taking over for deputy uh, Bob Vanderhoof who retired earlier this year. Uh, deputy Vanderhoof worked for the town for 40 years. Um, and so we're uh, very appreciative for him and uh, hope he has fun in his retirement. And uh, Deputy Arnum is off to a good start and uh, just wanted to congratulate her and look forward to working with her. Um, the Board of Selectmen earlier in this year talked about some a tree uh, on Pearl Street that as part of a project, the developer paved the side or constructed the sidewalk basically right through the tree, but kept the tree remaining. Uh, we had worked with 
the developer to uh, hold a tree hearing that was to be scheduled for 11 20 uh, november 20 of this month we've already received opposition letters so uh, the matter will be deferred to the board and we're looking to schedule that on the 12th i mean on the um, 7th of uh, december which i believe is, is your next meeting so we'll confirm that in between uh, but i just want to give you an update on that uh, mentioned earlier uh, during citizen updates is a letter of support that I was going to write uh, to support the 495 partnership. As the board knows, I'm a member of the board of directors of the 495 partnership, and I'm very supportive of all the things that they do. Uh, and I'm just seeking uh, your sort of confirmation that you're comfortable with me sending this letter. Uh, it wasn't intended to be from the board. Uh, and 495 is we're applying to the Massachusetts Office of Business Development for their Regional Economic Development Organization grant. And this is something that um, they've uh, received before and it helps just with help their economic development activities throughout the metro uh, region. Uh, it's not necessarily an, an acting project. It's just something that I wanted to offer my support to, but I wanted to make sure the board was comfortable with it. I didn't send the letter uh, until today uh, due to an oversight to the board. If there's any questions or concerns, please let me know. Um, and we can, it can be taken off the consent agenda if that's what the board chooses. Um, another matter is, um, <clears throat> three school street. We've discussed this recently, uh, town meeting authorized us to dispose of this property, uh, under, uh, conditions that the board deems appropriate. We had an RFP that, uh, was issued and it was unsuccessful. We did another one that is due, uh, this week. And we haven't had a lot of response to it uh, so far. Uh, so it's not looking like we'll get a huge response, but we'll, whatever comes in, we'll evaluate and uh, we'll report back to the board on uh, what we recommend for next steps. I wanted to also mention that there is a vacant building on Carlisle Road, 26 Carlisle Road, I believe is the address. This is a tax possession um, that the town has in its ownership. It is one of many, well, it's one of several properties that we own uh, and this is one that I'd like to, to uh, sell or get or dispose of uh, the town, me town meeting has already authorized us to sell tax possessions uh, and this is just a matter of uh, whether the board wants to dispose of this property for a specific use such as affordable housing or some other use or if the board wants to just sell it for the most money we can get for it so I don't have a recommendation for you tonight I just wanted to put that on your radar that uh, we will be bringing that forward um, hopefully before the end of the year uh, to look to look at uh, selling that property on 26 Carlisle Road. Um, other items, River Street Dam, uh, as part of the as part of the River Street Dam removal project, we're sending a letter to all the people that live next to it and downstream from it to let them know about the emergency action plan that we've developed and also to invite them to the next meeting of the River Street Committee, just to make sure that they're all fully aware of what's been happening, what's what's proposed to happen there. And as the board knows, the, the committee has recommended that that become a park. And uh, we're a few steps away from that being reality. The biggest step includes having the dam removed. And um, we're doing an archeological survey out there and we'll be seeking grant funding uh, next calendar year to help with that effort. There are, uh, I just want to give an update to the board. The September special town meeting authorized the town to enter a pilot agreement with the water district for their solar projects. And we're still working on the first of those right now. And it's a matter of um, discussion between our council and um, their council and it's moving along. Uh, so I will keep the board apprised as, as we get closer on that. Uh, the time capsule. So at the groundbreaking for the North Acton Fire Station, um, I announced that we're doing a time capsule with this building. It's something that I'm really excited about. Uh, the architect is telling me we have to decide sooner than I want to uh, what's, <laughs> what's going in that time capsule. Um, I was hoping we can do it, you know, and, and do it at the ribbon cutting, but now they're saying we have to do it sooner. So that's to be determined. But either way, um, I'm curious to see if the board has any input on letters or other small things that uh, the board wants to put in there to, to mark this uh, year or this era for the future Actonians who find this thing uh, 100 years from now. Uh, so let me know. Um, another regional item uh, I mentioned last week 
uh, recently that we e extended the agreement with our partners in Crosstown Connect. This is a, a five town partnership that's been very successful for the last five or six years, providing transportation services of many kinds to our residents, um, including senior transportation. We are in the process now of re revamping that program and are looking to have a new intermunicipal agreement established starting in July. So I look forward to coming back to the board probably in the spring with input on what uh, we're looking at doing for next steps uh, in that exciting endeavor. Another item is we had the Asa Parlin House uh, public input session last week. Uh, it was pretty well attended for a Zoom meeting. Uh, the architect presented three concepts for what we think we can do with that building to provide an amenity for the town hall and library uh, municipal complex. And the next step is to uh, evaluate the input we received that right night. And we're also seeking additional input uh, and we'll be soliciting that through our website and social media. And uh, we will continue to move that project along. Another opportunity for public input is with the Main Street and Prospect Street intersection project. A public forum will be held on that project on the 18th, which is two nights from now, 7 p.m. The link is right on the homepage. And uh, Corey York and his team will be presenting the 25% design for uh, the Prospect Street intersection with Main Street and what that uh, might look like and get additional feedback before we continue any further with that design. And finally, I wanted to mention um, we are continuing as, a, as an organization to work very hard to find ways to deliver services and find ways to uh, seek grants and pursue alternative revenue sources to make sure that even if we do have a difficult year ahead with unknown uh, impacts from this pandemic, um, that hopefully our revenues are, are okay. A good example of that is we just found out uh, last week that Corey was successful with Corey York in getting another grant from DEP for our composting efforts, $9,000. Uh, nice job, Corey and, and his team. Uh, another thing I wanna mention is that we held an auction, an online auction. Uh, it closed on Friday and the final sales are, I was very surprised, um, more than $70,000 uh, in total. Uh, many of those, they have to be closed and you know processed. So the money's not in the bank, so to speak, but I was very pleased to see such a great uh, response and uh, I want to mention that Austin Saganowitz took the lead on that and that uh, the public works team including Carl Maria uh, did a lot of work to make that happen so the, if, if it all comes in the 70 grand would be a nice nice surprise uh, for us this year so thank you thank you what, what did you sell for what did you auction off <laughs> all kinds of junk we're gonna have the cleanest public works yard in, in the commonwealth <laughs> okay. we got an old, old dump truck beds and all kinds of gadgets that people apparently want. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Also, also consistent with our sustainability policy where we reduce, reuse, and recycle. That's a very good example of recycling things that probably would end up in the scrapyard and we're also getting a little money from it. So I think it's a great uh, story. Okay. Um, okay, so, so member minutes, uh, Jim. Um, I don't have anything from my committees. I will, in the spirit of a letter that um, Franny Osmond sent to the board, uh, I just wanted to note that we have uh, 21 attendees, so that if you wanted the experience of, of you know, the old style in-person uh, Board of Selectmen meetings in a public room, you would be seeing uh, 21 of your neighbors in addition to the board. That's cool. Thank you, Franny. Um, Joe? Uh -huh. Um, David? Uh, nothing for me, John. Yeah. Uh, Dean? Yeah, I'd just like to uh, jump in on something that uh, the town manager mentioned, the uh, the forum on the Ace of Parliament House. Uh, I attended that. I thought it was, uh, it was a, a nice job, some great ideas that the uh, design team has come up with. Um, after, what, almost 30 years, it'd be nice to see something happen with that house. Um, I did walk around the site the other day, and without the single-story addition, it certainly looks a lot better than it has in, uh, in quite some time. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing that continue along. Also, I did participate in the, uh, the forum on the uh, Maple Street property, and, uh, and that, 
that worked out very well. Um, and I think, you know, this method of, of doing these public forums are really great. I think that, you know, we getting a great uh, uh, response from the public and so it's really a good way to manage these things. Probably more people are showing up on Zoom for these forums than would show up in real life. So uh, congratulations for getting all that put together. Good to see stuff moving forward. Thank you. So um, we're a few minutes past 7.10 and we were due to have a, a public hearing. So let me read the public hearing notice for the town of Acton. The Acton Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on November 16, 2020 at 7, 10 p.m. virtually on Zoom, https colon forward slash forward slash zoom.us slash j slash 503918785 on the application of Old Mill Development Trust for Site Plan Special Permit number 092820-480 under Zoning Bylaws Section 10.4 at 67 Powder Mill Road, map J3, parcel 59-6. The application um, and accompanying, accompanying plans can be expected at the Planning Division office and Town Hall during normal business hours. For information on how to participate remotely and to review the application materials, it's http colon forward slash forward slash doc dot actin hyphen ma dot uh, gov forward slash dsb i uh, know uh, dsweb slash uh, view v i uh, e w slash collection slash one two seven seven uh the applicant has requested a continuance of the hearing to december 7th um um 2020 um is there any discussion on that request, David? Well, I was just going to move that we continue the hearing to December 7th at 7.10. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Dean? Yeah, thank you. There were two, two issues that, that I saw with the plan that I was going to bring up in the hearing. And... Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to make mention of it now, and, and perhaps the applicant will have a chance to uh, to deal with some of these issues, or whether... Please, I, go, why, don't you, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Uh, num number one, and I, I did see some uh, email back and forth, I was very concerned about the fact that, uh, that the, the applicant did not avail himself of, the, uh, of a consultation with our design review board, and... Actually, they were trying to set something up, and his engineer had communicated with them and said that the project was on sort of infant hold and wasn't going to happen. So uh, certainly, uh, you know, DRB is not mandatory, but certainly it's highly recommended, and, and I was pretty upset about the fact that there was some miscommunication here of some sort on the part of the developer and his engineer. So... Hopefully, I'll take this time to meet with DRB. The other issue that I've got is looking at, as I understand it, the access to this new development would be basically through the parking lot of the senior center. And it's only a 20 foot wide passage route, which normally a driveway would have to be 24 feet wide. I'm very concerned about the fact that this through traffic would go right through the lines of parked cars where we have a lot of at-risk seniors in non-COVID times attempting to walk through the parking lot. And looking at the requirement that uh, site plans have to show safe vehicle and pedestrian access, I just can't see how this proposal would work. And I hope that in the meantime, uh, they will be able to meet with traffic engineer police chief, folks from the uh, senior center to discuss this because it, it seems on its face to be an unsafe situation that's being proposed. The second point that I've got just internally is that I think we should take a careful look at our lease 
on the property to see what kind of assurances we were given. I know that we were supposed to be guaranteed a certain exclusive use of that parking lot and whether or not there's any remedy that the town can take against the landlord. Um, but I think this, this is a major issue. Uh, I can't see how we could possibly vote to approve this as submitted. And I hope that in the meantime, they'll have a chance to uh, address those issues to us. Thank you. So are there, are there any further comments on uh, the motion to continue the hearing until December 7th? If not, then David, if you please call the roll. I'm Mr. Snyder Grant. Aye. Ms. Gardner. Aye. Mr. Charter. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. And I also say aye. Okay, okay. so uh, the that matter the um, is continued until the December seventh. That will be our next meeting at seven ten p.m. The site plan special permit hearing. Okay, so um, our next matter would be um, COVID nineteen response updates. Uh, John, please. We uh, are closely monitoring the the case count. Uh, Board of Health is meeting right now, I believe, and they're having some conversations uh, about where we are as a community with COVID numbers, how the York is presenting. I think we're at 23 or 24 active cases as of today, uh, which is where we've been trending uh, for the last uh, four or five days. It's certainly uh, a surge in cases nation nationally and across the state. So we're, we're a little concerned. Uh, we're going to continue to watch very closely. I know that uh, the, I believe Peter Light, superintendent from Acton Boxborough Regional Schools is at the Board of Health tonight talking about uh, some procedures for how they are planning to handle this going forward. And I think I'm very impressed with how uh, Heather York and Cheryl Ball have been working with Peter Light uh, and Peter's team. It's been a, a, a very uh, collaborative process to handle this very complicated and quick and rapidly evolving uh, matter. And I know that they're working right now on making sure that they have plans to handle it um, the best way that we can. Uh, in terms of how we're doing in a town hall, uh, the mask mandate we've uh, implemented throughout the buildings. Uh, we are again looking at telecommuting as a potential, uh, you know, which kind of, we may be leaning more towards telecommuting for those positions that are able to. Uh, we are not introducing public into the building at this time. The library is closely monitoring their current program, which allows uh, 50 people to be in a building uh, at a time. Uh, they are within- How many people, that's 50 or 15? 15. Um, and then with the staff in the building, uh, it's never more than 25, which is the current standard for um, what you're supposed to have inside of a building. So I know they're meeting, I think the trustees are meeting later this week to talk more about uh, if they want to change course at all. Uh, but that's currently the plan. Um, and yeah, you know, we're just trying to keep everybody safe. So, um, I had gotten um, a, an email from um, Barry Rosen, who's an Acton resident and an Acton Water District Commissioner he had hoped to be here tonight, but they have a um, their uh, water district meeting. So he sent me a, a short note that I just wanted. I told him I would read during uh, John's uh, presentation. Um, he said, during two recent errands in my car while driving past the school campus along Route 111 during dismissal time, I noted quite a few groups of students walking home along both 111 and Route 27. Most were groups of two to four students. Not a single student was wearing any kind of mask that I could observe. This took place um, this past week on Monday and Tuesday. Perhaps the governor's message concerning masking in public has not reached all of Acton. Along Route 27 toward Great Road, I observed most, but not all of the adults wearing um, some sort of face covering. I wonder if the board could remind folks of the seriousness of the Commonwealth situation, perhaps via various forms of communication, which might include something front and center on our town website. The AB schools might also be encouraged to remind our community of what needs to be done 
both in the classroom and in other public places. Um, thank you and be well there. Any thoughts on Barry's comments? David? Do, do you know if he copied the school district? Um, no, it was just to me. Okay. I could send it to Peter. It's a good uh, idea. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to ask Barry to send it himself to, to Peter. Okay. Okay. Um, so we, we have then, um, um, you're putting uh, on, on hold, John, any recommendation about reopening town hall. That's at this time. time. At this time. Yes. Yes, okay. that's correct. Um, we are, um, we did get some complaints. Uh, with, with the police activity has been, hasn't been too significant. Uh, the Board of Health does get complaints from people saying, I saw so-and-so not wearing a mask or there was someone on the rail trail not wearing a mask. So we did do signage uh, the, you know, the, the first few days of this new order uh, from the Governor Baker, but we're in the process now of putting together some more permanent signage, which we'll put through uh, both rail trails and in some more of our recreational areas, just to add another reminder and also to give people, you know, just to remind people, everybody should know at this point, it's just a matter of reinforcing. Um, my clear sense is we're in for a, a long, tough um, uh, winter, um, and we're all going to be watchful and mindful of each other, and particularly our seniors. Is there uh, any thought going into, um, you know, reach out programs to seniors, checking in? on seniors as they would like? We, uh, through our couple and aging staff, we do reach out to uh, make phone calls on a weekly basis to many residents. If there's anyone that you know, or that you know of, of that you think we should check in on, please let us know and we can add them to our list. Uh, Sharon Mercurio has been doing a very nice job in trying to adapt her programming to radio and to uh, virtual uh, they've done a lot of different things, and hopefully people are, are connecting with them. The Job with John program that Sharon uh, produces, we had our 30th episode uh, on Friday. Uh, so that's 30 times that we've had a conversation with seniors over the last eight months. And I think that's we've been getting some pretty good feedback from many seniors about that. And we'll continue to try to do different things. There's a few drive-through events planned, uh, drive-through um Thanksgiving meal and a few other drive through events, but you know, it's not the same as what we're used to. Yeah. Okay. Um, any further comments or questions on John's COVID update? Okay. So um, we could move on to discuss the Minuteman High School Athletics Project, Athletics Field Project. Dr. McQuillan, how are you? I'm uh, well. It's good to see you, uh, even in the Zoom world. Um, yeah, I appreciate the time, and the, and uh, John's been very gracious in, in giving me some time on the agenda to bring you up to date. Um, John, I don't know if it's or Mr. Benson, the chair, if I should. Uh, Please call me John. John. Okay. Chairman John. Yeah. There's, no, there's there's John B and John M. Oh, okay. Thank you. Or you might remember the Sloop, the Beach Boys song, Sloop John B. Oh, I love that song. Anyway, um, I can go through my PowerPoint pretty quickly that I sent around this afternoon. Is that necessary? I see some head shaking. Yes. Is that all right? Okay. You're yeah, watching for the because people are watching and. Uh, okay. Can you leave the screen? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Let me. Uh, Little thing gets in my way here. Um, oops. There we go. Okay. Here, can everyone see that now? 
Yes. Okay, great. What a beautiful campus. Yeah, I don't know if you've all been there, but I've been giving some socially distant tours this week from different folks from different towns who haven't had a chance to get there. Um, happy to do that. But just to give you an update, um, if you're not familiar with the project, we are, our MSBA project is a year early and we are on budget. Um, we began in September and we had to leave in March. So we haven't had a full year in the building, which is um, sad, but we're doing what we need to do. In the original MSBA project budget, we included in the uh, submission to the MSBA a minimal field project because we didn't at that point in time, which was nearly six years ago, we didn't want to overestimate our ability to manage the project in a way that would give us more funds. But as we come to the end and we're beginning the closeout process, we have about $4 million available from the MSBA project funds to put towards an athletic field. <clears throat> and right now, because of the situation, we've had uh, competitive bidding. And so we've gotten some great pricing on our basic bid as, long, as well as six um, alternates. And because of the economic situation and the COVID, we have very low, historically low interest rates. So I've met with the town managers a couple times in the last month or so. And, um, you know, they've encouraged us at the district level to keep looking at how we could get uh, the full project built. And we also did an analysis of uh, the revenue generation potential from adding lighting to the fields. And for a small incremental investment, we see a, a greater uh, opportunity for revenue. And I have all kinds of reports available if anyone would like to see them. Um, so this has all happened over the last three weeks. Uh, we got our bids in at the beginning of October. We were very surprised at the pricing. And I'll go over that in a second. But uh, this was the base bid. And it really involves three uh, multi-purpose synthetic fields. Um, all the accompaniments of dugouts and bullpens and batting cages. Uh, we had to maintain emergency vehicle access, et cetera. Some equipment and scoreboards for each of these uh, base bids. There's no lighting including in, in this and there's no real competitive track. There's just simply a walking track around the larger field. Um, I should also mention that part of this field, part of these fields are in Lincoln, part of them are in Lexington. And this has been fully permitted through both towns, conservation and planning, which was um, took some time. Oops. Very sensitive here. So the alternates that we included in our request for bids that were developed back in uh, late August through September, we wanted at the bidders to bid on lighting for the three fields. <clears throat> Well, with a competitive running track, some other non-fixed equipment that has to do with the tracks, and perimeter fencing around all three fields so that we could, you know, keep dogs off but still allow local folks to come and walk around. So back in, in uh, as far back as June now when we were contemplating the base bid, we were getting a lot of good feedback from the construction community about there'd be interest in this because there weren't a lot of projects like this in the area. So the school committee looked at what we had for building project reserves and we're about $4 million. What we had in our facilities rental revolving account or an enterprise account, because we'd had a pretty robust rental program up until we started construction and lost all of our home fields and then you know, when we tore down the existing building, we had a swimming pool in there and all that. So it's been pretty stagnant the last year. But we also had um, quite a bit of money in our Minuteman capital stabilization account. And the reason we had money in that was because about five years ago, when we realized that we we're going to be building the building, we also recognized that the MSBA formulas for furnitures, fixtures, and equipment, FF and E, were woefully inadequate to equip a vocational technical program. So we started setting aside on an annual basis, 300,000, 200,000 dollars 
But about a year before we moved into the building, we started to aggressively go after some grants. And uh, the Baker administration <clears throat> created something called the Capital Skills Grant Program. And <laughs> if you count the $300,000 we got last week, uh, we got $1.5 million in equipment. So we never had to go into our stabilization account in the way that we thought we did. So the school committee voted to allocate that to the base, uh, the base athletic field bid. This is a listing that we had eight bidders and uh, there was quite a range. Uh, Heimlich Construction, who was the low bidder, uh, we got these bids in October, the beginning of October. Then we had to go through a process of vetting the bids and interviewing the two low bidders checking references, um, check, you know, bonding, uh, performance bonding discussions. And we found that Hamlet had done a project recently in Lexington and they were very satisfied. They also did three uh, synthetic fields at Shawsheen Valley Technical School in Billerica. Um, Mr. Hamlet himself was a little discouraged that he left so much money on the table, but we were very grateful. Uh, <laughs> So you can see the bids and how he bid each of the alternates. And this is just a, a slide showing each alternate and what the amount was for each of the alternates. Um, this slide shows um, the total construction budget for the base bid plus each of the alternates and the soft costs and contingencies going across, going along with each escalation in the total project value. So if you look at the bottom right hand corner, you'll see 1.9. <clears throat> That's the difference between what the school committee approved from Minuteman's own resources and what it would take to do all six alternates. Um, yes, and so that just shows the delta and that's how we came up with wanting to uh, to borrow. We looked at other alternatives, uh, but with the rates being what they are right now um, and, and the feedback we got from the town administrators and the town managers, it was, um, they encouraged us to pursue this. This is slide here talks about the, the revenue projections. Now I've got to say with a grain of salt, as everybody knows, hopefully COVID these are non-COVID projections, I guess I would say. Um, but we did our own analysis and then we submitted our analysis to a company called Ballard and King. And they came back with more conservative estimates. They based the, their rates on all municipal type of rates where we were basing some of ours on our experience that we've had with private uh, recreational groups and athletic groups that have rented from us in the past. So we decided to use the most conservative estimates um, from Ballard and King, and that report's available if anyone wants to see it. The other thing I need to mention is that we haven't had a home field in four years. We've been spending between 75 and $100,000 a year to rent fields, to transport kids to other sites. We we obviously aren't expending any of that now because we canceled all fall sports and I recently canceled all uh, winter sports. But lighting of the fields, which is a lot of the cost of this 1.9 million, will certainly, as you can understand, add more hours of available rental along with the other assets that are part of the new building that we still haven't been able to fully uh, utilize, a theater, a gym, we have corporate meeting spaces that are served by our hospitality and culinary arts programs, courtyard student union, training areas. Um, we really, when we're all through this COVID thing, and if this is fully built, we're going to have quite a, a portfolio of, uh, of assets that could generate some revenue that would go into the uh, revolving account and could be used to offset the costs of the fields as well as other operational and capital replacement costs. Oh boy. So this is a breakdown of, now we used 1.7%, not 0.6 or 0.7, because we wanted to be conservative as well. But the total of payment would be about 223,000 in year one, down to 193,000 in year 10. 
And, um, you know, Acton's annual component of this, that's, which is represented by your share in the district right now, would be between 21000 it's almost $22,000 and $19,000 a year over the, the next 10 years. And this, I have to, you know, this is the total risk around borrowing. If we were not to experience any revenue generation in year one or two, that would be the amount that would be um, included in the uh, act and assessment, uh, annual assessment. This is the anticipated schedule. Um, we did award the base bid. We haven't awarded any alternates yet. Um, and with, if we, even with a three month um, uh, stoppage and work over the winter, we would be completed in the fall of 2021 and be able to use the fields. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if there's any questions about any of the slides that I could go back to, or if um, I'll just stop sharing and we can have a discussion. Sure, let's have a let's open it up to uh, questions and comments. My my, my question: is, How does the process work for? Um, um, for uh, meeting your funding request. Your that's a great that's a great question. Regional schools, as you're probably aware with Concord Carlisle under chapter 7116D, <clears throat> the school committee would vote to authorize the borrowing, the Minuteman School Committee. And then within seven days, uh, the Minuteman administration would make each town clerk aware of that vote. And then each town would have the option to hold a special town meeting to disapprove it. Um, if in 60 days no town has disapproved it, then by virtue of non-disapproval, <laughs> the vote of the school committee would be valid and we could move forward with borrowing the 1.9 million at that time. Uh, I, I should mention that the contractor has agreed to hold all that pricing till the middle of January. So there'd be no escalation over the next couple of months um, in as much as is possible. And cause you know, a lot of components of construction and materials, depending what they are, have been going up significantly, but we've tried to build that into our contingency line item in the soft cost area of the budget. So the, the school committee is scheduled to meet tomorrow. The vote is on the agenda. If the vote passes, then the 60 days would start from tomorrow. Um, this is been a hard thing. Go yeah, ahead, the, the, the seven days is once you vote, then within seven days, you have to notify the clerks of the town. Is that correct? Yeah. Correct. And then we have 60 days for, for towns to have special town meetings for the purpose of disapproving. Correct. If the, the towns are fine with it, then no action means it's approved. And I think I only have one more town to go to. And so far, um, after meeting with FinCom's appropriation committees and the various committees in each town, everyone is supportive. And um, we have wished we could have known about this earlier, but it was really a matter of the last six weeks understanding what the possibilities were because we had really not intended to build lights. We wanted to get pricing because we thought it might be good. We had no idea it would be this good. Jim. Um, I think David might have had his hand up first. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, um, hi, Doc Brad. I'm the um, board uh, liaison to, to, to Minuteman, and I had a great conversation with Pam Nurse, who's the acting representative to the Minuteman School Board today. And um, the, the conversation went very well. I'm very pleased with the project. I'm very pleased with you were able to find this way to, uh, you know, potentially increase revenues and create a, a great um, set of facilities there. Um, I, I had a conversation with Pam about, you know, the pros and cons of, of uh, artificial turf versus natural turf. 
Uh, I, my conclusion after that conversation and a little bit of research is that the, the, the advantages in terms of lower maintenance costs and also the advantages in terms of um, unmaintained uh, natural fields are, are as hazardous or perhaps more hazardous than the, the artificial fields. Um, I would so I'm in total support of this project. I would, it would encourage you to look into, if you haven't already, you probably already have, um, some of the safety aspects uh, that can be uh, safety issues with artificial turf that can be ameliorated. Um, you can choose uh, the you can choose plastics that don't have PFAS in them. Um, you can choose uh, um, the 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 the, um, the stuff that gets poured in between the grass. There's some choices there that will that are you know uh, more um, much less hazardous. Um, and um, you can also look at the degree of um, uh, flex and give in the, the turf. As you probably know, the original artificial turf when it came out was very uh, unforgiving, and there were a lot of uh, injuries at first. Um, so just would encourage you to make sure that you're, you're getting uh, the level of, of, uh, of flex in the, in the artificial turf that's it's going to create safe conditions for your for your players. Yeah, that's a great point, Jim. I, I'm really happy to tell you that the, the fill that we're using is an actually an engineered wood particle infill. It's there's no petroleum based products at all in it. It's actually grown um, in the United States. Um, I think it's southern yellow pine mm -hmm. is what it's made out of. It's considered a sustainable, renewable, organic infill product. Um, it goes through a whole process, but there's, um, it offers better traction than crumb, crumb rubber is what, you know, you see that black stuff kicking up when, when the Patriots who we used to watch all the time, uh, uh, but it's, it's zero waste in its production. It's a hundred percent of the tree is utilized. And at the end, when they re redo the fill and take it out, it can be composted. It's really, I didn't know um, this existed until we opened the bids, to be honest with you, because we were looking at different natural kinds of fills, like coconut husks, and and they were all pretty maintenance intensive. But this is a fairly, I don't want to say brand new product, but this company has put in several fields with this product in it. And it's been so far, I, I think the oldest one they have is two or three years old, but I'm really excited about the product because there's been a lot of concern about synthetic fields and this is like a synthetic organic field it's <laughs> an oxymoron but thanks that's great to hear david yeah just a re really quick question I, i'm 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 very supportive of this this project you know you need nice fields and they'll get a lot of use over their lifetime um the um uh assessment increase t table that's based on the 1.9 million dollars uh, figure from your earlier slide. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Dean or John? Looks like a good project. Dean? Yeah, I, I think it's a great project and uh, very well put together. I know there's a huge amount of demand for feel, so uh, yeah, I'm mm. big thumbs up on it. Great. Um, I, I would make one suggestion, Ed. Um, the finance, the acting finance committee meets next Tuesday night. Um, uh, we can give you Christy Anderson's uh, contact information. She's the chair, and you know, um, it is a matter they should hear about and weigh in on. So I would encourage you to reach out to Christy and get on her agenda for next Tuesday. And, yeah, Mike, uh, anyway. Mike Majors is on that committee, right? Yes, he is. Yeah, Mike's on our school building committee, and he right. and I were talking earlier today. Well, actually, I had eight meetings today since 2 o'clock. One of them was our school building committee meeting at 5.30. And uh, I think Mike was going to try to get that scheduled. Okay. Because then they, um, you know, they're, in, in, uh, under our, our charter, they are a, you know, financial advisory committee weighing in on what goes before town meeting, special town meeting, and any other financial matters that come up during the year and they should certainly be one of them. Absolutely, sure. Okay. Um, 
Okay, uh, John, um, what steps would we have to take now? Um, uh, the board could consider uh, voting to support it, or the board could the board could just consider acknowledging the presentation and looking forward to the next steps. Okay, so um, you, you, uh, first, I guess, you, your, um, Ed, your board, the regional board meets tomorrow night they do. to give the say-so to go forward with it. So why don't we wait um, for your board to act, for the finance committee to weigh in, and um, we meet again on uh, December 7th. Sure, that they'll right? ask me, they will ask me if there was support in acting, and I hope I can characterize it as a oh, I think all five of us are in support, yes. Great, thank you. I Things are that. going up. <laughs> all right. Um, thank you. For, thank you very much, then. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Anytime. Okay. Great Anytime. job. Good. Stay healthy. All. So, um, our next item is the um, is number six, the board to approve 2021 license renewals. Jim, you've never been through this before. Um, so just, you know, ho hold your seat. Um, it's a... John, you muted yourself. <laughs> there you go. Mutation, stealth mutation. Um, um, this is going to take a few minutes. John, in the future, is there any way that this could be on consent? The board could choose to uh, take this up later in the meeting. Uh, and uh, I don't know if it could be on consent. I can ask uh, legal counsel. Okay. If we want to, we, let's just run through the other items first, because this is just going to be reading off several pages of, of businesses and descriptions. So, um if we could move then to item seven, um, which is the um, private way plowing agreement for Heron View Road and Wincliffe Drive. And John, if you could just. Uh, it, sure, it's, a, it's been a past practice of, uh, of the Public Works Department to provide plowing if there's an agreement between the private way and the board and uh, the two roads that um, Corey worked with leading up to today are Heron View Road and Wincliffe Drive. Uh, the draft agreements were in the packet. All the people that lived on those streets, I believe, signed it already. It's just a matter of um, getting the board support, and then I will sign it if, uh, if I have that. So you want a formal vote from us? Please. Okay. Are there any questions um, on the two agreements? David? Yeah, um, I believe that neither of these streets has no trespassing signs at the entrance. Is that correct as far as you know, John? I don't know. I can, uh, someone. I'm, I'm pretty sure they do, they do not. Um, so um, I know that's been a reason in the past to uh, object to these agreements, but I don't think that's the case in these two streets. So I, I think I just wanted to confirm, but I'm, Pretty sure that's the case. Um, Corey's here. If if there's any further questions, I didn't realize Corey was here. Thanks, Corey. Any questions? So then, um, I don't know if Corey can confirm that there's no no trespassing signs here. Yeah, David, you are correct. There are no signs that prohibit public access. Thank you. Okay, so if Jim move, move to approve. So it we a move to approve the private way plowing agreements for Heron View Road um, in the amount of thirteen hundred nineteen dollars and twenty eight cents, and Wincliffe Drive in the amount of thirty four hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, is Joan, do you move that motion? Move, yeah. And second. 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 Okay. Um, uh, David, if you'd call the roll. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. So it's unanimous. Okay. So the um, 
Next item would be um, for the board to consider declaring the vacant house at Four Piper Lane a surplus and discuss next steps. Uh, John? Thank you. So uh, the, the board knows uh, that we, as the board knows, we just acquired the Piper Lane open space parcels uh, at the end of last month. And with those open space parcels, we also acquired a home. Um, and this home is not something that, as town manager, I have any specific recommendation for how we could use it um, for any municipal purpose. So I'm asking the board to consider declaring a surplus, or I'm asking the board for an input on other ideas for how uh, it might want to use it. Dean? Yeah, I, I would move that we declare the house at Four Piper Lane to be surplus, and that we direct the town manager to uh, attempt to dispose of it. And then you know, if that passes, we could uh, have a little discussion as to how we might recommend disposal of it. Okay. Okay. Motion made and seconded. So discussion on the motion. Dean, would, you, would this be um, disposing of either selling it Right. Um, or, or taking it down? It would be, my recommendation is that uh, the town manager put together an RFP and we look at disposal of the property. Either someone might be interested in picking it up and moving it whole, or they might be interested in coming in and taking certain parts of it um, that could be reused. My understanding from discussions with the Historical Commission is that most of the historic fabric of the building had been removed with some uh, very vigorous renovations that were done some years ago, so there's not a lot of historic fabric to be saved. Um, considering the complications of attempting to, uh, to move a house like that, in a congested area like South Acton, it would be tough, but certainly if somebody's interested in doing it, we should avail ourselves of the opportunity. I think a similar process is going on right now with an attempt to dispose of a, uh, a house over on the campus of the Discovery Museum. So uh, I think, you know, that's the only thing we can do with it. David? Yeah, I just want to dig confirm I, I think this is the case but I just wanted to ask one more time um, considering the conservation restriction on the property there's not the option to have this become affordable housing is that correct John uh, I would defer this to our officially appointed recently town council <laughs> um, so Yes, that's right. Um, there, so there's a couple of things going on. I don't think with the conservation restriction on the property, um, there would not be a way to sell off the lot as a separate lot um, for affordable housing purposes. Um, it at most it may be possible to retain the house and to rent or, or lease it out um, for affordable housing but that comes with a whole lot of other um, um, administrative issues as far as uh, the town is not really in the business of being a landlord for properties um, and it's historically been a difficult thing for the town to do well uh, not just in Acton, but, but anywhere, really. Um, so it is possible um, to retain that house, but not sell it off separately. Dean? Yeah, I, I would just amplify that. Um, the, the entire parcel, all of the parcels were purchased with open space set-aside funds. Um, the discussion of retaining the house for some kind of affordable housing purpose was discussed in, with CPC and even the affordable housing advocates on the CPC were opposed to it because it would eat up a lot of resources that could be better used on other projects. Uh, 
we did, you know, this is pretty extensive. I pulled out here's the, the warrant from when we voted this. It's some pretty extensive documentation explaining that the entire parcel is supposed to be used for open space. In addition to that, there was private fundraising that was done. Those funds of about $60,000 have been donated to the town and accepted specifically for open space purposes. So to say nothing of the fact that I got up at town meeting and told everybody this is what we we're going to do. And it was very clear in all of the presentations, including the ones I did in advance on cable TV, that the house would be disposed of and that the entire parcel would be used for open space. So even if there was a legal way to do this, which I don't think there is, I think we'd have a real credibility issue of attempting sort of a, a I don't want to make this sound pejorative, but a bait and switch. So I, I would certainly be opposed to uh, changing course at this point. Okay. So we um, have a motion and a second to the motion. If there's no further discussion, um, David, uh, please, uh, Jim, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, a couple thoughts. Um, so when I heard what the advocate said about, uh, you know, the use of the limited use of the CPC funds, um, my, my conclusion was just that we're not funding affordable housing appropriately well, that uh, if, if there was an opportunity there to have, um, you know, to have funding, then that would have been nice. But I recognize that now that the, that, that train has left um, the, because of the way the vote was at town meeting. Um, so just, just a comment there that I think that, you know, if the only reason we didn't do affordable housing there was because there didn't happen to be enough money in, in, the, in the community preservation funding, um, that suggests we just, we need to do better with the funding. Um, the only other comment I had was I'm remembering when the West Acton Village uh, project was um, was being put together, um, what's now Village Works, and part of what they did with one of the houses that had to come down was they spent um, they were very careful about recycling the materials, and even though it cost them a little bit more, they they did go ahead and um, you know find um, uh, uh, companies or individuals, they, they, they contracted with a company that was able to do a really good job of reusing the materials, uh, taking the wood away to, 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 to a set of people, taking the other materials away. And I'd encourage us to think in the, in the same terms, if we don't find a seller, a buyer who could just take the whole thing, that's a wonderful option. But if we end up uh, at a disposal choice, um, I'd encourage us to be careful about, you know, not just, you know, uh, taking the building down and throwing it away because there's a lot of materials there that we with, with a lot of embodied carbon in them that it'd be great to have them reused rather than uh, just you know throwing it. Okay. It? Yeah, just quickly, I agree. There's a lot of uh, what's sometimes called net zero waste uh, companies now, which will do that sorting and sell. Okay. So if there's no further comments, and David, if you would call the roll on on Dean's motion, then. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye, so that's unanimous. So, N Nina, I, I had, before we get into the dog park, I, we, there was a, a procedural question on, um, on to approving 2021 license renewals, uh, the lengthy list, uh, which you've historically just read off. Can that be taken up as a consent item? Yes, what I would say is I don't see any reason why it can't be taken as consent. I would recommend doing it almost as if it's a consent item from um, town meeting in that you read down the list and if anyone has a hold. And okay, so just so go ahead and read the list of ways, as we typically do. Okay. If, okay. If, if the right. issue is just, uh, it's not to... Um, put you through administrative and procedural torture because lawyers like to do that. It is um, because this is a statutorily mandated licensing process and particularly where there have been issues over time with specific um, licensees in town. Uh, I think it is worthwhile reading through the list to make sure that the selectmen believe 
that each of those applicants um, deserves another license. David, thank you. I'm, I just wanted to confirm uh, with town council that this might need to be done in like a series of five or six consents because there's five or six categories of licenses, right? So it's, it can't be one, I'm assuming it can't be one uh, big consent because there's different wording on each of the sections. Yeah, sure, we, sorry, I don't have it in front of me, so I just assumed we vote multiple times. Right, right there's, there's car licenses and liquor licenses, and yep. okay, yeah. that's everything. Okay, all right. So, um, I'm just so noticing we can, that I was just noticing that there, uh, there appears to be at least one person with their, their hand up. I didn't know if this was a time when you were calling on people. Oh, is there, yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Hi, it's Sheriff Westack, and my comment was about Fuller Piper. If you'd like to give me 30 seconds for this. Uh, a four Piper? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, it just wouldn't have changed the vote um, because I agree with everything I was hearing. Um, not that I couldn't have anyway, but uh, the point is, is that um, we don't have uh, an, an Acton Rehab Housing Trust or a Housing Rehab Trust uh, that can buy properties, redo them, sell them or own them and rent them and uh, this would have been a, a great opportunity to do something like that so although again like Jim pointed out um, you know the train has already left the station on that particular property um, but such a housing trust would fill a gap an important gap I think in town thank you thank you chair okay so let's then move um, to item nine board to um, approve a dog park location um, are there any final comments um, before we uh, have a motion and take a vote? Um, from are we I'm sort of exhausted on the uh, uh, subject, uh, uh, Jim? Um, I just wanted to um, thank uh, you and Joan and, and Nina for um, you know working to communicate with the Isaac Davis Way neighbors. And I imagine we might hear more about that or not, but I, I just, in any case, no matter what happened uh, and what happens, I, I just wanted to appreciate that you put a lot of time. Oh, and, and John, hi, Tom. Man. Yes. Um, that you've all been you know, working away at this, and I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. And, um, and Nina's two children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sure they're keeping the, the meeting was simply going in a, in a right direction when they were there, when they weren't there at one moment. I know. Perhaps I should bring them to every meeting. Bring them back. You could charge, you could charge uh, the Isaac Davis neighbors, by the way, for their uh, um, their presence. Um, I, I just had, um, you know, the one comment. I, I know that, you know, from my, my observations that all, you know, that four of you were, you know, for the, um, um, you know, um, Main Street site, um, and that's the way a democracy works, and I'm comfortable with that, and will su certainly support the version. I, I will vote against the siting of it. You know, on Main Street, I firmly believe that a dog park belongs in a, you know, in a recreation area, um, not um, abutting on um, a neighborhood. You know, one of the things from the discussions that we had with uh, uh, the neighbors and um, I think it was the dog park committee who I thought did a, a really spectacular job over the last several years um, that um, se uh, seven town sites um, were rejected. They never got as far as our board, but uh, there was strong neighborhood objection because they just did not want the dog park sited in, in their, in their backyard. Um, there were six other sites that were looked at um, where they either too many trees would have to come down or they were just, you know, not too far off the beaten, um, off the beaten path. Um, you know, I just, you know, don't believe it, it belongs in a, um, in, a in a residential neighborhood. And I hope that uh, sometime between now and town meeting, that we would be able to work out a list of accommodations uh, with the neighbors. I just, you know, I, I want it settled. I can see it settled going into town meeting. And I don't want to see the neighbors 
um, actively oppose, you know, put place their opposition to the CPC, um, you know, funding uh, funding request that uh, the dog park committee is going to have to make to get their uh, 10 percent uh, uh, threshold. Nor do I want to see a, um, a non-binding citizens petition brought uh, against reciting the dog park and and having it face town meeting um, on, on that basis. So um, you know that's I just wanted to, on the record that's where I stand on. Um, Joan, uh, as the liaison to the dog park for the past what three or four years. That committee has worked very hard, and they have looked at many sites around the town with various situations on different sites. And this site came to the committee's attention, and we've looked at it very carefully and think that it is a good site. And the vet is across the street. The police station is across the street. And I think we should go ahead with this. Okay. Um, so it would it would the would, uh, Nina, would the motion be in two parts um, that we establish the, the main street site that the lower parcel uh, as the dog park site um, and whether or not we were going to take it to town meeting, which we don't have to because it's on town property. Um, but from the political perspective of getting the town's approval, does it have to be in two parts or just one motion can solve it all? It's, it's however you all want to structure it. It certainly can be in two motions or it can be one. Okay. So do I have a motion then? I move that we at the dark park on the lowest section of our Main Street property. Is there a second, David? Uh, a second, but just to note that's 348 Main Street is the lower parcel. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe that should be in the motion, Joan, is that okay? Yes, yes. Okay. And that would be simply to establish it at that site and that would, and it's done. Yes. Servant's clear. So is there any further discussion? Okay, so David, if you would uh, call the roll. Okay, uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Uh, Mr. Benson? Nay. And I say aye, so that's uh, four to one, it passes. Okay. So it's established there, there is no need to take it to town meeting for a, a non-binding approval. Okay. Can, so, can, can I just, just note the, uh, the dog park committee uh, intends to ask for um, CPA uh, money. And so it'll be on the CC, CPC um, uh, list. And so it, it will come up at town meeting. Okay. I, I would also note, and perhaps this is just reiterating some of the comments you made before, but my understanding is that the board you know, intends to continue working with the abutters to find, you know, some suitable um, accommodations to their concerns about being sited next to a dog park. That's correct. So okay. we will continue to work on that. Um, before we get back to license renewals, if we could do the consent items, because I think one may, uh, one may be held for, for, for discussion. So, um, let me um, then move the following uh, consent items. Number 10, approved meeting minutes, October 19 and November 2nd and November 12, 2020. I'd hold that one. You're gonna hold that one? Okay. Um, number 11, accept gift active nursing service for $100 from Ben and Deborah Pilch towards the active nursing service and gift account. Item 12, approved request for installing a bench on Meeting House Hill, Acton Garden Club. 13, accept give finance division for donation of artwork valued at $500 from the Jones family. And number 14, accept gift recreation department for $100 
uh, from Anthony and Michelle Rooney to be used for a recreation, new recreation facility and playground at Jones Field. Number 15, approved executive session minutes, October 1, 2020. Number 16, approved donation of surplus materials to clear path for veterans. Number 17, approved support letter for Metro West Compact. Oh, um, is there a hold, Jim? Yeah, thanks. Okay. And then number 18, um, approve Elizabeth White Fund grant recipients. David? Uh, move to approve uh, consent items 11 through 16, inclusive, and 18. Second. Is there a second? Okay. Um, I'll uh, then call the roll, David, please. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye, so that's unanimous. Okay, so let's go to um, item 10. That's the, which meeting minutes did you have a question on it? Uh, Jim, I'm sorry. Um, let me uh, find it. I wrote it to Lisa and David, and now I'm looking for where I wrote it. There were a couple of minor, uh, minor changes. Um, I, I could, uh, share my screen perhaps. Why don't you share the screen? Great. As I get back there, share screen. Okay. Let's look at my Outlook mailbox here. Um, so the first one is a change on for Monday, October 19, 2020, where it talks about um, the GRACE site. Um, and it says GRACE has met all remediation obligations at the site with long-term EPA monitoring continuing for the foreseeable future. I wanted to clarify that the, um, that the, the GRACE still has work to do. Um, the GRACE has met all active remediation obligations for the soil cleanup at the site. Grace will continue monitoring of uh, groundwater um, groundwater at the at, for the foreseeable future. Okay. Any comment on the suggested change from Jim? So, are we satisfied with that change? Thumbs just acknowledge uh, just uh, hand acknowledgments. And Dean, okay. So that's for October 19, mm -hmm. um, November 2. Yeah, um, this was just a, there was a, a phrase developing an overaction policy, which I think was meant to say developing an overarching policy, but um, you know, maybe Dean can speak to that. Dean? Yeah, uh, I think that's, that was my intent was overarching. Great. So are we are we um, good on the suggested change, Jim's suggested change for the November second minutes? Okay, thumbs up. Okay, was there a, a third? No, that's it. Thanks. Okay, so um, can we then uh, call the roll and vote on um, um, consent item ten, approving meeting minutes? Um, as amended for October 19th and the November 2nd minutes with the November 12th minutes being uh, fine as submitted. Okay, I'll, I'll second that. And then uh, uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. So that's unanimous. Okay. So then a discussion of items, consent item 17, approved support letter for Metro West Compact. Jim? Um, yeah, just uh, this, is, I think, was more of a process concern or a question. Um, so I think what you explained, um, uh, Mr. Manager, was that this, was act this wouldn't actually be a letter from the board. This was a personal letter from you, and you just wanted to check out to make sure there wasn't any 
um, you know, concerns we had about it. Did, was I hearing that right? Uh, that is how I envision it. But of course, if it wants to, if the board wants it to come from the board, that that could be um, the way it goes out as well. Okay. And um, the other the other question that I think we got in an email was whether it seems like to me, re looking at that draft, that it, the 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 letter did not add any extra um, uh, commitment or promise on Acton's behalf to do anything in particular. That we're already a member of the compact. Um, this wasn't about not being or being a member of the compact. This was just about supporting the the redo grant. Is that is that correct? Uh, yes, we, it's the Metro West Partnership. We're currently member. We, we have been for many years. Uh, I sit on the board. I think previously Janet Adachi was sit, was was a member of the board. And um, the letter does two things. It certifies to uh, the state that we're part of the partnership, just to uh, confirm that we're part of the geographic um, extent of the partnership, and which we are. And the second thing it does is it says that we support the idea of seeking this redo funding, uh, which is something that the partnership has received in the past and it helps to helps them or it do the work that it does for our region, uh, marketing, uh, providing uh, guidance and technical assistance with business, assistance with the economic development, um, several things like that. Great. So yeah, and it, it, in, in general, it was an oversight on my part on Friday to not just have it in the packet to begin with. I think this whole conversation probably could have been avoided, which is which is my fault. Uh, no big deal. I just thought it was good to have us clarify that all, and uh, I'm I'm fine with supporting. Thanks. Thank you, David. I I move to approve the uh, support letter for the Metro West Compact. Is there second. a second? Joan. Joan seconds. Okay, um, and uh, David, if you call the roll, please. Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye, so that's unanimous. Okay, so the last item um, would be uh, the number six is the board to approve the 2021 um, license renewal. So bear with me on this. Um, John, do we have to make motions on each kind of license? Yeah, I'll do that at the um, at the start of, of each, and then read the list of licenses, and then we'll vote for okay. each segment. I hope I have the stamina that you did a year ago. Okay. <laughs> um, I move that we approve the license to um, expose, keep for sale, and to sell all kinds of alcoholic beverages to be drunk on premises as listed in the renewal master list, section 12, in the amount of $5,000 each. Um, is there a second to that motion? <laughs> okay, let me read. Um, Seventh Settlement South, LLC, DBA, True West, Peter Henry Manager, 537 Massachusetts Avenue, 1130 AM to 12 AM, five days a week, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 uh, a.m., Sunday, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. The Cody Inc., that's DBA, um, ben, is it uh, B-E-N-J-R-O-N-G, um, uh, Orchard Tran Manager, 214 Main Street, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. Concord Brewery LLC DBA Rap Scallion to tap uh, table to tap. Um, if I could just interrupt you for a moment. Yes. I, so all I intended was just to, for you to read the name of the establishment as you go down, so that folks could object or hold. Oh, okay. Okay. You can okay. just read the name. Okay. So um, thank you, Concord Brewery. Um, the El Hoopiel Acton Restaurant Corporation, um, Gerard M. Um, Lambros, DBA La Lioness Restaurant, uh, Great Road Seafood Sales, uh, DBA Atlantic Seafoods, Indoor Sports Management Inc., Doing Businesses Overtime Bar, um, J Men Corporation, DBA Crossroads Cafe, um, LI. Fat Inc., DBA Spice Garden, uh, Spice Pepper Garden, um, Maori Exotic Foods, DBA Maori 
Indian cuisine, not your average Joe's name. Um, PO, uh, PO's Barbecue, um, LLC, DBA, Ginger Court, Quail Ridge Country Club, LLC, Red Raven, Inc., DBA, the Red Raven uh, uh, Gastro Pub, Roundtable Entertainment, LLC, DBA, the Holy Grail, um, Yang and Zhang, Inc., uh, DBA, Beijing, Tokyo. Um, so it, that motion has been made and seconded. Are there any questions? And uh, Dave, if you please call the roll. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Uh, Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. Okay, uh, the next group. I move we approve retail packaged goods stores licenses to expose, keep for sale, and to sell all kinds of alcoholic beverages not to be drunk on premises as listed in the master renewal of section 16 of the $2,000 license. Um, LB Corporation, DBA, Buscemi's Town Life Convenience, Elm Associates, Inc., DBA, Colonial Spirits, uh, Pram Monk, uh, Mahant, Krupa Corporation, DBA, Acton Wine and Spirit, um, Acton Liquor Corporation, DBA, Acton Liquors, uh, Vasudev, Inc., uh, DBA, Red Wine and Brew. Um, I'll, sec I'll second that. Second that. Um, are there any questions? Okay, then David, if you call the roll, please. Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye, so that's unanimous. Okay. I move we approve the retail packaged goods stores license to expose, keep for sale, and to sell wines and malt beverages not to be drunk on premise as listed in the master renewal, renewal license section 15 license of the $1,500 each. They are uh, Chekai Corporation, uh, DBA Active Convenience, Donald Supermarket, Inc., Idlewild Farm. Um, is there a second to that motion? Okay. Um, Dave, if you call the roll, please. Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. I move we approve the common particular license to expose, keep for sale, to sell wines and malts to be drunk on premises as listed in the master renewal uh, section 15 at $2,000 license. Bueno Action, LLC, DBA, uh, Bueno Asano, Acton Bowler Drone, uh, DBA, uh, Burger Dome, um, Concord Acton Squash Club, uh, um, New London style pizza, um, twin seafoods of Acton LLC. Is there a second? Second. Okay, David, please call the roll. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. I move we approve the class two used car licenses as listed in the master renewal list. There at a hundred dollars a license. Um, um, Acton Gas, um, Alf Cars, and uh, Ur uh, Ural of New England, Auto Dealers Exchange of Concord Inc. DBA, um, A. Odessa, uh, Concord, um, um, uh, Dick Dolan. Um, Tony R. Um, El Quarry, DBA Cars of Lebanon, J. Scott Motors um, for Eastern Road, J. Stackhouse Enterprises, Inc., Wholesale Auto Licenses, Inc., Family, uh, Family Acton Family Automotive, Mill Dam Leasing Company um, at 99 Great Road, Mill Dam Leasing Company. 7 Great Road, New Garage, LLC, Northeast Collection, Inc., Wheeler Dealer, Inc. Is there a second? Second. 
Uh, David, if you call the roll, please. Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. I move to approve the Class 1 new car licenses as listed in the master renewal list at $100 a license. Um, Act in Ford Inc., um, Act in Ford Fleet Lease Inc., um, Act in uh, Lincoln Mercury Inc., DBA Act in Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, um, Alpha Cars in Ural of New England, Eric Gilfast, DBA Lease Facts, Gordon Chevrolet, DBA Colonial Chevrolet, um, Koch Acton Inc., DBA Acton Toyota, RRM Limited, DBA Acton Toyota, RRM Limited, DBA Acton Toyota, R. Santilli Automotive Group, uh, DBA Village Saab, R. Santilli Enterprises, DBA Village Subaru, Santilli Enterprises, DBA um, Village Subaru, that's at 61 Powder Mill Road. The, uh, the previous was at 50 Powder Mill Road. Swanson Buick GMC Truck Inc. Um, is there a second to the motion? Second. Um, David, if you call the roll, please. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. Um, I move to approve the entertainment licenses listed in the master renewal list. This is for $100 each. The Red Raven Gastro Club, uh, 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 Pub, Concord Brewery, DBA, Rap Scallion, Tap, uh, Table to Tap. Um, second. Second. Um, David, if you call the roll, please. Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. I move we renew bowling um, alley and billiard table licenses at the listed, uh, as listed in the master renewal list. Um, $10 per alley, $10 per table. Acton Bowler Drum, 16 alleys. Is second. There a second. Second. Uh, um, David, if you Kindly of call the roll. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. M Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. I move to approve the 24 hour permit as listed in the master renewal list for $1,500 um, CVS at 400 Massachusetts Avenue only. Second. Second. David, if you call the roll, please. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. Um, I move we approve um, automatic amusement devices as listed in the master renewal list, $100 per machine, indoor sports management, Inc., 20 Great Road, nine games, Acton Bowler Drum, 257 Main Street, 50 machines. Is there a second? No. Uh, Dave, if you call the roll, please. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? I just want to say I had no idea that there were 50 games inside of the Acton Bowl. I got to get <laughs> there tomorrow. Yeah. Aye. And <laughs> Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. Okay, I move to approve taxi cab licenses listed in the master renewal list, $25 per license. Tatiana um, Ben Harboni at 25 Second. Spruce Street. Second. Second. Uh, David, if you call the, the roll. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. B Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. I move to approve a taxi cab driver's license as listed in the master renewal list for $10 for Tatiana. Ben Harboni at 25A Spruce Street. Second. Okay, David, if you call the roll. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. <laughs> Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I also say aye. 
Okay. Is killing. I, I, I move to approve um, a license to tell fortunes for money as listed in the master renewal license, $2, uh, John J. Lorenz at 50, uh, 59 Dover Road. Second. Second. Joan. David, call the roll, please. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant. Aye. Ms. Gardner. Aye. Mr. Charter. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. And I also say aye. Okay, I move to approve the following uh, common particular licenses as listed in the master renewal list. This is a, a lengthy one um, for $100 each. Um, seven Settlements South at LLC doing business as True West. Um, Acton Coffee House, Acton House of Pizza, Acton Indoor Sports uh, doing business as Teamworks. Uh, Acton Seafood Sales, DBA, Acton Sea Grill, uh, Atlantic Sea Grill, AP um, Pizzeria, one at uh, AP Pizzeria, Bagels Plus, um, Beijing Tokyo, uh, Venture on Restaurant, Blackbird Cafe, Bueno Asano, uh, Burger Drone, Crossroads Cafe, DiCapria Pizza, Donald Supermarket, Dunkin' Donuts, at 100 Powder Mill uh, Plaza, Dunkin' Donuts at 315 Main Street, Dunkin' Donuts at 182 Great Road, um, El Hoopiel uh, Acton Restaurant, uh, Philo's uh, Great Road, um, uh, Ginger uh, Ginger Court, Junior's Pizza, Legends Cafe, or Lion Ace. Uh, Mayuri Indian Cuisine, McDonald's at 55 Great Road, London Style Pizza, Not Your Average Joe's, Quail Ridge Country Club. Oh, Rath wait. I had a question about Quail Ridge Country Club. Yeah. It seemed to be in a special highlight, highlighted color or something. Was there something different about it? Um, Lisa? No, I don't think I don't think that's a problem. Do you want us to come back in three weeks? I, I'm on. Hold on. <laughs> Not sure why that was highlighted. Okay, I'm Hold, on. Hold on one second. I don't see that on my list. Mm. Um, but why? Uh, while you have me on, um, I just want to add that the Orange Door Kitchen uh, is not their club. Closed. However, they're going to be transferring their their, their uh, license. So, um, if you could just go back to there and vote on whether or not they could renew their license until they get a transfer, which should be at the end of December. Where Where was Orange Door Cafe? Uh, I, I can I can find it. Do we want to finish here first, and then I'll yeah, let's finish here first. Yeah. Sure, no Trail Ridge right. Country Club. Rapscallion Tap to Table, Red Raven Gastro Pub, Sorrento's Pizzeria, Spice Pepper Garden, uh, Starbucks, uh, Subway 134 Great Road, Subway 255 Main Street, uh, Twin Sea at 541 Massachusetts Avenue. Joan second. David, if you call the roll. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant, um, have we let go of any concern about Quail Ridge Country Club? Yes. Okay. Then I will too. Aye. <laughs> Ms. Gardner? Uh -huh. Yes. Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I say aye. And so the, so, the orange uh, door. Orange door was on page two um, under the first section. Um, so we, I guess we just need to read that again with one item in it. So you see that the, the top of page two, Orange Door yeah. Hospitality. Um, on page two or page? The, this, the second page. Okay. It's really second cool. page, second. it's the first full item on the second page. On my copy, it's not readable. It's like highlighted in such a way that I see no words. Okay. Yeah, I, so, I, I, I can read it. I can even make the motion if you would like. Please. Okay, so I move that we approve the license to expose, keep for sale, and sell all kinds of alcoholic beverages to be drunk on premises as listed in the renewal master list, section 12. Uh, Orange Door Hospitality. 
LLC. Second. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, David, if you call the, the roll on. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I say aye. Thank okay. you, members. Lisa? Well, I, thank you, members. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I did have that uh, updated uh, today, but I apologize that you didn't have it in time. Oh, that's okay. Not You're so good. <laughs> Um, so that would um, uh, um, conclude all our agenda items. Um, we will meet again on Monday, uh, December December seven. Um, uh, if we could take a, a good holiday to all and, and a motion to adjourn. No move. Second. 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 Second, David. Okay, call the roll, please. Uh, Mr. Snyder Grant. Aye. Ms. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Charter? Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. And I say aye, so we're adjourned. Okay, thank you and good night. Yeah, good night. Thank you for doing that item last. <laughs> well, thank Nina, because in, in the past they've read all the, the address, the hours, the manager. Yeah, when we're down to like five or six remaining attendees, that, that really drove them away. And now I feel like I'm a real member of the board, too. So. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's your it's your true rite of passage yeah, in this, yeah. as chair when you have to. You're not do that. making me get the tattoo. I appreciate that. Thank Nina, you. Thank Nina. you for. for the board's tonight. version of hazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, all. Happy Bye. holiday. Bye.